Je vous ai trouvé Isabelle. I found Isabelle marrant pour lui. d'être au cœur de ce qui se passe. I need to be in the heart of the action and to be in contact with my teams. I can sense the vibrations of my little bees in their hive. A quality controller has to have a certain background to understand how things are done and can be improved. So there is quite a degree of technical skill required for some quite rare pieces. Des pièces un peu rares. Have you ever wondered who is behind the hands that make fashion and luxury items every day? Behind every piece of clothing, every accessory and every object, there are men and women perpetrating these practices on a daily basis and passing down their passion. In this podcast, we will meet these lovers of know-how, the faceless people who hold precious knowledge on how to make the fashion and luxury items of tomorrow. Today, we go behind the scenes to hear from these men and women in the wings who will tell us about their profession, their passion, their desire to pass down a unique know-how. Because now, more than ever in France, we need to enter the continuation of these exceptional professions. Welcome to the podcast Savoir pour faire. Just a stone throw from the Place des Victoires, fashion house Isabelle Maron is buzzing. A new collection is being prepared. In this chic and bohemian Aladdin's cave, whether it be Isabelle Maron you cross paths with in the corridors or any other employee, she opens her doors to us as we go to meet Penelope Deal on a work-study contract as a quality controller. But before that, a guided tour with Virginie Croisier Industrialization Director. Bonjour Marjorie. Bonjour. Hello Marjorie. Hello Virginie. Oui, Is this your office? Je suis Isabelle Maron. Je m'appelle Virginie Croisier. Suis... Yes, welcome to Isabelle Maron. My name is Virginie Croisier. I am Industrialization Director at Isabelle Maron. I've worked with Isabelle for 21 years. Since we're in your office, let's pause here for a moment, because I guess this isn't the office you've always had. I know I've been a lot of different places. Before, we used to be in an artist's studio, which was amazing, and we came here in 2011. But you're right in the heart of fashion. The Place des Victoires is just a few seconds away. Yeah, it's great. So tell us more, because Isabelle Maron is a fashion icon today. How did you meet her 21 years ago? I was really lucky because it was Isabelle Maron who interviewed me. She told me a whole story. She really impressed me. But at the same time, she's very down to earth and easygoing, just like you and me. She's not like other designers. She doesn't have an ego. For years, we would have lunch at the same table every day because there were only 15 of us at the company, which has gradually grown bit by bit. She's very accessible. So how have things changed over the course of 21 years? I mean, what was it like working at Isabelle Maron 15 years ago compared to now? I often say that, yes. I've worked at Isabelle Maron for 21 years, but it's as if I worked for five different companies in that we've had lots of new phases, lots of creations. We created a second line, the Etoile line. After that, we had success with Beckett. Then we moved, we came here, and now here we are, where she is famous around the world. So you've been to 15 employees to how many today? Almost 500 today. And what exactly is your role? When I was starting out, I could have had an entirely different career. I did economics, so yeah, I kind of fell into fashion by chance, but also out of desire. I'm a production manager, so I'm responsible for sending the client order book into production. I manage all the products made by the Isabelle Marron brand, men's wear, women's wear, shoes, leather goods and accessories. I'm like an orchestra conductor who sets everything up so that we can start production in the factories. Then, of course, we monitor production right up until the finished products arrive at the warehouse. I arrived at your amazing fashion house just a few minutes ago. And when you arrive, there are lots of people around. It is this buzzy because there is an event on or is it always like this? It's not always like this, but we've just started an exhibition of the spring 2022 collection. 
So it's all a bit mad at the moment. It's all a bit mad because our showroom turns into a real exhibition showroom and clients can come here. Let's have a tour. Here we are on the production floor. It's kind of my domain, certainly my team. There really are clothes everywhere. This is how you imagine it would be, and it is. Yes, they're everywhere, at all levels, at collection, at production. We need to have all these clothes because basically we are responsible for the fit of the clothes and the quality. As such, all the items that go into production pass through our office and are analysed before being signed off for production in our garment factories. Later, we're actually going to meet a quality specialist too, Penelope. We are going to be talking about her job today. But obviously, I wanted to have a tour before meeting her, and she will talk to me about the quality business in more detail. Anyway, after you, let's continue. So now we're entering the menswear studio. They're currently working on the catwalk show, which is at the end of September. For menswear? No. For everyone? We only do one catwalk show for women's ready to wear. And we show a few men's silhouettes during that show. So here are all the stylists. They're working on the prints. It's quite nice, no? This yeah. one. I think we, did, we have some, a couple of different ones. Yeah. One of the cat- there. Yeah. So can be nice with Hang on, we headed to the stairs. This is already the third set of stairs. Yes, it's a little labyrinth here. Now we're going down to Isabel Marant's office. She's in a meeting at the moment, so I'm not sure we'll be able to speak to her. Is that where she does her creating? It really is her living space. She's there all the time. She's someone who works a lot, who's always in the office and who breathes real energy into the whole team. But I can't quite believe that you can just go into her office. Is there no door? No, well, yes, it's how she works. It's normal. She doesn't like enclosed spaces. And does she also like to have all these clothes to have fabric around her? Yes, she tries on a lot of things. On herself? Yes, she tries loads of clothes on herself. She has mannequins, of course, but... She also tries a lot on herself to see the finish of the garment always. And because she knows exactly what she wants, she pushes us to make sure we get there. And often we get there. Have you seen that young people develop quickly or indeed less quickly in this profession, including yourself? Yes, I think that Isabelle Marron is a good education. Let's continue. So we're taking another flight of stairs and going down to the workshop. It's funny, I thought it would be noisy down here, but it's actually the quietest place we've been. Yes, it's the calmest. So these are the patterns, the traces, I'm guessing. Yes, these are the patterns, what we call manual patterns. They're drawn on tracing paper and all the finishes are written on it, do you see? These are the seam allowances, the button locations, the zip locations, the direction of fabric. With each pattern, we provide the manufacturer with what's called a technical sheet with all the important points to know to properly assemble the garment. So what's this lady doing? She's assembling a prototype, a jersey dress. Let's go to the quality department. Are we going to meet uh, Penelope now? Exactly, who should be doing a fitting with the pre-production sample. That happens a few times a week, and we try all the designs that are ready to go into production as we go along. So we receive the pre-production samples, which are checked by Penelope, and the quality team, and are tried on to a mannequin, which corresponds to our size 10. And if the design is perfect, then we will launch production at the factory. Welcome to the quality department. Thank you. Penelope is part of the quality team, which is a team of six people, a manager, three technicians and two pattern makers. So they see all the pieces from the Isabelle Marron collections pass through here. They do all the checks. She'll explain her role much better than me. Here, Penelope, I'll leave you to explain your job. Voilà, Penelope. Penelope. Bienvenue. Merci. Penelope Dill, uh, 25 ans. 
Je suis assistante qualité en alternance ici. Uh, I'm Penelope Deal. I'm 25. And I'm a quality assistant on a work study contract. I've been on a work study contract for two years, but before that, I did some work placement here. So it's been a while now. So let me show you a bit of what I do. This is the quality office. So the quality team runs down the whole length of it. It's very pleasant because we're underneath the glass roof. So there's a lot of sunlight, which is pretty nice. Today, there's a bit of noise, but it's not very often. It's the showroom. It's normal. The pattern maker, that's Canago, for example, is busy analyzing, possibly altering a design, following the fittings. This department is Lectra. The Lectra department are pattern makers who work on computers. It's much quicker, more efficient. Unlike the workshop downstairs, that's what you mean? No, actually, first of all, we use the manual method. Then we digitize. Ah, okay. On the table, the big white table over there, very upright, we magnetize the designs or tape them, and then we use a little remote to digitize them. And that goes directly onto the computer. Or, alternatively, we can also construct them directly. It's a bit like architecture. And over there is the design office. That's Calido. Everyone who produces the technical sheets and... I think you have a guest. Bonjour. Je suis ravie. Déjà, déjà, je vous ai vu de dos en train de travailler. On m'a arraché de ma table de manière totalement impromptue. I found Isabelle Marron for you. Hello, I'm delighted to meet you. I saw you earlier from behind as you were working. I was wrenched from my table very unexpectedly, but I'm delighted to come over and discuss quality. I wanted to say, though, that I was surprised to see such an open office. I'm not a designer on a pedestal in her big office all alone. No, I hate that. I need to be in the heart of the action and to be in contact with my teams, to know what's going on, even if I can't see everyone and it's going on behind me. At least I can sense the vibrations of my little bees in the hive. That's lovely. <laughs> Basically... We are here today to talk about quality. I'm guessing that for you, it's super important, right? Yes, it has always been of paramount importance. Sometimes I even take prototypes away with me to see how they hold up, if they misshape. I find it really frustrating when you buy a lovely garment and then suddenly it gets damaged or a jump of felt in the wash. So yes... I think it's important to try it as much as possible to deliver a product that has been well thought out and manufactured as best as possible. As a profession for young and indeed old alike, people who want to change jobs, what's special about it? What might inspire someone to want to do this job in the quality? I think it can be really interesting because you have access to these exceptional products that we need to make even more exceptional with the possibility of adding real value to these pieces. Indeed, the job exists in the clothing sector, but also in lots of other sectors. To be a good quality controller, you have to have a certain background to understand how things are done and can be improved. So there is quite a degree of technical skill required for some quite rare pieces. But do you need to have a background in fashion to work in quality at your company? It's better if you know what a seam is, how many stitches in a centimeter, to know about the composition of a fabric, the cut. So I do think it's fairly essential. One final question. When I see all these buzz, what's it like coming out of the crisis? Is fashion in a position to employ at the moment? What's the general feeling? For me, it's great. It's going really, really well. It has made me realize that I have an incredible team who are making collections that have been very successful despite COVID. Thank you so much for dropping in on our podcast. It's been a real pleasure. You're welcome. Penelope, racontez-moi, parce que donc vous avez 25 ans, qu'est-ce qui a fait que vous So, avez... Penelope, tell me, you're 25, 
How did you end up in this profession? Tell me about your education, what made you want to work here at Isabelle Marant in the quality department. I think it always starts out the same way a little bit. I think everyone will say pretty much of the same thing. It's the joy of fashion. It's loving making your own clothes. In general, that's how it starts. Then you say to yourself, if I can do it for myself, then maybe I could do it for others. Mm, hang on. So you're saying that when you were younger in your bedroom, you would make your own clothes? Yes. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say clothing. That's overstating it. There were things. I'd take bits of fabric, cut out a shape as best as possible, try it, unstitch, tear, pull. It never really looked like much. But bit by bit, things started to emerge. So you're saying you were passionate about it from a very young age? For me, fundamentally, I loved sewing a lot. I had a sewing machine. I made my own bits and bobs. And yet, none of your family are in this fashion world, or are they? Not really. My mom did fashion design when she was younger. She worked in lingerie. But I guess that, well, obviously, if she hadn't been there, maybe I would never have had a sewing machine. And maybe I would never have had the urge. So I'm grateful for that. I was lucky. So as soon as you pass your high school diploma, you decided to come into this sector. Soon after, I started out doing art, a bit of photography, a bit of drawing, a bit of everything. And after a while, I actually did a work placement just out of university. And after that, I looked for training. The problem... You got the bug? Exactly. Like as soon as you arrive, you've seen it yourself. You want to touch everything, to be able to do everything. It's very rewarding to see all this. The problem is that it's a little bit complicated in terms of studies to start so late. Why is that? How old were you? I wasn't that old. I must have been 21. But usually to study pattern making, you need to already have a foot in the door, some experience. Everyone in my class has done a vocational baccalaureate, an honors degree, an NVQs, or those types of things. But I still managed to find this college. Which college is that, as it may help others who would like to do it? It's called the AICP. It specializes in pattern making. So it's really, really great because it offers work-study courses. And that's what, for me, helped the most, especially in a manual profession where you really learn best when you're in contact with the professionals. And to clarify, pattern making means constructing a garment? That's right. But it's not fashion design, right? It's not the same thing. It's completely different. In fact, you're not inventing a garment. Not at all. Well, we more or less still have a hand on the first draft. In that, we will suggest how the designer's sketch is analyzed. We will have our own interpretation of what we see. Inevitably, depending on the pattern maker, the various master patterns that could ensue will be completely different. So you found this college and then Isabelle Marron, she just appeared like the fairy godmother with her magic wand. It was more a happy turn of events in that I was looking for work experience. I can't remember whether it was off the back of a speculative application or a reply to a work experience inquiry. But by some miracle, I came across Cindy who told me all about it. I had absolutely no knowledge about jobs in the quality sector at all. Of course, you started out in pattern making. Yes, and I still knew nothing about it. Anyway, we met up. She explained what it involved and the principle of this department. And obviously, it appealed to me. There's loads of things to do. It's extremely varied. That's what's great about this job. I just saw atelier, couture, Isabelle Marant. Done, let's go. After that, it's about meeting the people you will learn from. So today, quality, it's something that you really passionate about. Can you explain to us exactly what it is that you do, you personally? So I receive the pieces in the collection. Then we check everything. We measure them. We give them to the Kalido technicians so they can check the finishes. 
all the seams, if they follow the guidelines, if the seam allowance is correct, if the stitching is right, if the size of the pocket flap matches. Basically, lots and lots of little things like that. And once everything has been checked, we send them to the first fitting stage. We look at what works, what doesn't. Depending on what we say, we adapt the alterations. And then they're giving to Kaneko, or me. Or sometimes if there's no time, they're sent directly back to the workshop pattern makers. Do you really need to have done sewing to do this quality job in fashion or not? No, not at all. In fact, in our sector, those who tend to do the alterations, it's Kaneko and me. But otherwise, there's lots of feedback. But do you need to know about fashion? Not sewing, but fashion. You need to know about fashion. Like, quality means what it means. The idea is still to produce something that is as high quality as possible. It's a luxury brand at the end of the day. We have to justify what we produce. We do thermo tests. Thermo adhesive fabric is fabric with a little bit of glue on it that reinforces a certain part of the garment. So the collar, the pockets. We think about what supplies we need, what size of buttons, but mainly it's about the fittings. This department is truly the link between the workshop and production. That's why when we go somewhere else for the fittings, there is the quality manager, Cindy, me, or my colleague Pauline. There are production managers who collect the designs because after, there is all the communication with the factories that they take care of. And there is the workshop manager who is really tough and who decides on the alterations and how the alterations should be done. Because depending on the alterations we make, there are lots of ways of doing it. So you need all these opinions. So it takes a real mixture and the link between the workshop and production. Would you recommend a quality profession to um, young and old alike? Yes, of course. It's very varied. You never get bored. There's always something new to do. What's good about this job is that you need to be sharp. You have to understand things. It takes logic. But there's always something new you have to think about. So it's never boring, never the same thing. You promised me I could have a try on. So I will be your model. Is that okay? With pleasure. So show me this famous skirt you were talking to me about earlier then. Here's the skirt. You can go into the changing room. Okay, in I go. That's gorgeous. What color is that? Electric blue. I think it will quite suit me, even though I don't have blue eyes. It suits your complexion. Could you unhook it for me? Because I'm, I'm holding my mic. There we go. Light, you can put it there for me. See you in a minute. Thank you, Penelope. Bon, à tout de suite. Merci. À tout de suite. Merci, Penelope. If you would like to work as a quality controller, find a training course on the website savoirpourfaire.fr and go to the fashion and luxury sector.